chat if you're unfamiliar. This is uh, the one, the only Matt Bell. We've done a couple things together, I suppose, just like hopping on uh, to talk about stuff. Former Yu-Gi-Oh based individual, now freed from the shackles of designing cards in this game. Your last product was the Battle City box. Yes. Um, so if, if, any, if people in the uh, audience want to know uh, what my background was, I was the product manager for Konami Europe. So my job was kind of like a mix of Kevin Tour, Jerome and somebody else. Uh, I was responsible for talking to the manufacturers, working on game design. I worked on FNL lists. I worked on uh, World Premier cards. Uh, I basically worked on about 200 products, uh, I think, during my nine and a half year stint when I was working with uh, Konami. And it was it was a great experience, honestly, because I, gr I grew up, I loved Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, saw that first episode on TV and I was like, oh my god, yeah, this is the best thing ever. Uh, really, really got into the game and I got to go through the program and eventually start working on uh, on a game that was so important to me when, when I was growing up. And it it's changed a lot since then. I, I won't lie, there was a time when setting uh, T-Set was considered a tournament level play that you should be making uh, to where things are now. For me, Yu-Gi-Oh, the designs that I kind of worked on, I was very much about the fantasy of uh, playing a particular strategy. So if you're playing like a Dark Magician deck, it was important that it felt like you were playing a Dark Magician deck. And these were the kind of things um, that I worked on, like uh, Dream Mirrors. The inspiration for that was good. From Silent Hill, uh, if you saw the movie, it was like the bathroom like turns like suddenly rots away into the darkness of uh what silent hill was and it was kind of like the idea of can you do this with like a Yu-Gi-Oh theme like can you have this series of monsters that almost like shift into nightmares so that was the kind of stuff that got me really excited uh when when working on cards but yeah that's a pretty quick introduction to to what i've done for like the last for for the nine and a half years that i was there and then i went on to work in video games and now I've opened my own uh, design studio and I'm working on my first game that I want to kickstart later this year. Yeah, before we get into any of the specifics of the stuff you just said, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, that studio and what you're working on? Yeah, of course. Uh, so I opened Matorga Studios, uh, which was actually a nickname I got from my colleagues because of all of the stuff that I was doing on the Noble Knights theme. Mm -hmm. uh, but the game I'm working on is called Robot Raiders. It is a one to four player game uh, where one player takes on the role of the monster and they will battle against three players that are playing as the raiders which are played uh, by robots and the object of the game is either the monster wins or the raiders they go through the dungeon they collect loot they level up they gain new abilities they get new cards in their deck it's a little bit like diablo uh slay the spire the world of warcraft raid decks uh, these are the kind of inspirations that came from it i can actually show some of the art and stuff uh so yeah this is like the box shop for ribble raiders um the idea is we really want to capture that sort of asymmetrical pvp game it plays a lot like a tcg so players that have played Yu-Gi-Oh, magic um pokemon those kinds of games they'd be familiar with it and it wanted to feel a lot like that and then the idea if the monster player has like a really overpowered deck and as you're going through the dungeon they get new bosses that come in and they adjust their deck and the robots are adjusting theirs so you're kind of almost deck building on the fly as you go through things and i guess if you're playing as the monster it's a little bit like if you've ever gone to the conventions and done duel the master which is where you yes. have some you have like a high level player yeah mm -hmm. and they've got like an overpowered deck which has like forbidden cards in it or cards like Seal of Orikaukos, if you're from way back when, uh, in the upper deck eras. And it kind of, it wasn't fair, but it was supposed to be fun. And that's kind of what the monster player uh, is in this game. This is what one of the robots, the idea is that you've got three traditional RPG classes. You've got a mage, a paladin, and an archer. And then the monsters are different, uh, the different tiers. There's a big spider dungeon, our first one that we're working on. Yeah, you've got your three robots, the magical combustion unit, the Armored Holy Conduit, and you've also got the Rapid Fire Archery Sky. The, the idea is that you've got to work together as a team to beat the monster, because if you're just kind of not coordinating with the team, you're probably going to get run over. And an example of one of the bosses is uh, Doran the Spider Cultist. And we really want to capture sort of the, the fantasy of playing as each of these RPG classes. And then can you do it with robots? Um, I was a huge fan of Metabots, I think. Was it in the 90s oh, of so long yeah, ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that was, I, I really wanted to do something with that. And I also kind of a big fan of like Diablo and stuff and the leveling up and building your character, adding new cards to your deck and then gaining abilities, which change how your cards work and stuff like that. You haven't seen anything that's been released really in the last couple of years? No, no, I am going into this uh, 
completely blind. So I'm I'm a little bit nervous because cards can be. You, it sometimes takes a while for a card to sink in, how ridiculous it will be, but we'll see how much of that uh, R&D experience comes back to me when we're going through this. Rather than just be like, is this card good or bad? I'd kind of like to get your feelings as a designer as to like what you think the use cases for this card could be, what scares you about it, like, uh, et cetera. And I want to start with a, uh, a series of cards that I think I would feel comfortable saying that many people got wrong, uh, including myself. And including the entire OCG, who had a very different understanding of if these cards were good or not. So, in about 2022, a series of cards came out called the Runics. These are modular. You can do one of two effects, and each one of these cards has two different effects. You can activate one of the effects, your next battle phase is skipped, and you can either, this card searches a card, uh, this card protects a monster from being destroyed by battle, this card destroys an opponent's effect monster. Uh, and then banish a couple of cards off the top of your opponent's deck. Or you can special summon a runic monster from your extra deck to the extra monster zone. And these are a bunch of low-level fusion monsters with sort of negligible effects. Oh, I, I should show you also Fountain. Hold up. I should I should show okay, you the sure. card that, that makes sense here. Uh, so this is this is the card that kind of makes the deck tick. Uh it is meant oh to my be God, okay. Yeah, it's meant to be a callback to Spellbook of Judgment. <laughs> so, that part to, well. to kind of temper expectations here, yeah. Um, it's back, yeah. by the way. Uh, Judgment is back legal. Uh, we don't play it at all, but we could. Um, Sorry, what? Yeah, Judgment <laughs> came back really... and everyone decided it wasn't worth it. <laughs> is, is it. Is it one copy? Uh, I think it's at three at this point. Three copies. Oh, the, the, the last two years, things have gotten kind of out of hand. Uh, so this card allows okay. you to activate any of these runic quick play spells during your opponent's turn, and then once per turn, if you activate one, you can target up to three runic quick play spells in your graveyard, put them at the bottom of the deck, and draw that number of cards. So wait, draw three cards? Yes. In a perfect world, you will wield these cards as like removal or interaction, and then because one for one removal and interaction isn't very good, you can then refill your hand and potentially find other more random ones. Okay, and then it skip your battle phase. Is that just on Runic Tip, or is that on? It's on all of them. Um, oh, so it's not a battle-centric deck. No, uh, no, it isn't. Finish the top card of your opponent's deck. Uh, so this is going for deck out, I guess. That's the general play. Yeah. Or there's going to be some crazy combo. Um, there is some. Them, but I... There is some weirdness. Your all three cards is already insane, and the fact that you get to play quick play spells from your hand on Runic Fountain. Um, that's like one of the best parts by quick play spells is they are generally quite well protected um, from opponent's removal and you get the flexibility of being able to use them in the battle phase. Uh, so this is like really intriguing. It is something that I'd probably find myself spending a lot of time on. Um, it also gets you to special summon monsters from the extra deck, but they're not properly summoned, so you can't revive them. So I guess it'd be kind of interesting to see what monsters you, you can summon from this, because uh, I can't tell if that's like the main main effect that you'd use on one of these cards on this uh, card or searching your deck yeah i will say on each individual card you will use both both modes a lot uh let me see if i can pull up some of the fusions most used fusions are these two gary the runic fangs which can't be destroyed by card effects and then when special summoned can target a non quick play runic spell so almost always the fountain Add it to your hand, and then when it's destroyed by battle, you can target a card on the field, destroy it. And then Hugin, which, if special summoned from the extra deck, can discard a card to add Fountain from your deck to your hand, and replaces a destruction. Oh, wow. This card is really good. Uh, this card is card individually is. very powerful. And it just gets you the draw free card that lets you play all of your cards from your hand. This seems yes. hyper consistent, because tip seems great. This seem, seems really interesting. Uh, the the question is, I guess, on the deck out aspect, is like how many cards in there actually get cards out of the opponent's deck if that's the way the deck is supposed to play. Because tip is just like one card. Mm -hmm. I assume the worse the effect is, the more cards you'll banish. That's true. Um, there are some, uh, they're mostly one, two, and three. There is one card that does four, but it's all downside. It's like your opponent draws a card and then you banish four. It seems quite difficult to play as well. Like it doesn't seem as, as intuitively obvious as like your game plan is I'm going to just win by 
following a strict line and making a combo or slapping down a bunch of damage into you. Uh, and I guess like all of your quick play spells, it is a little bit like spell books, right? Where you're kind of looking for the right tool for the, the moment that you're in. So it's kind of a bit of a reactive strategy. Uh, and then drawing, you get to draw three cards a turn. That just seems so crazy. Oh, I should to probably me. note, uh, Runic Fountain's draw effect is a soft once per turn. Uh, so additional That's copies cool. of this card can theoretically draw you like six. No, it's not even during your draw phase or end phase. It's literally just No, it's just three. when it happens. Oh, I misread this. Yeah, oh my yeah. god. Um, it's a reference to judgment, but it is way better. I assume like if you had a good pilot behind it, this would do quite well. Oh, how, how many times did this go to time, this deck? This feels oh. like another one of those grindy decks that couldn't ever actually finish a match. One of those scenarios where if you go to time, you're always winning. They have a card that gains you life points almost explicitly so that you don't find yourself in that position. It's, that's amazing. He's like, oh yeah, we just we, we have a random quick play life, uh, life gain card just for end of match procedure. I really like this theme. I think this looks really cool. Uh, these cards were really cool. They're, they're sick. Uh, a lot of people have played them, but they play them in a lot of different ways. This like banish cards off the top of your opponent's deck is really good and does come up but very seldom wins the game. Usually what happens is because all of these battle phase skips stack, you will have a turn in which you kind of establish control of the board, eat the battle phase, put your opponent on one draw, and then just kill them the next turn. Ah, okay, yeah. You just win in the one battle phase that you grant yourself and you just grind them out completely. The OCG did not really play these cards at all. They played them almost exclusively as the deck out strategy and found that it was a little too difficult to achieve the deck out. When they came stateside, players just started playing it not only as like powerful control tools, but also just as 20 copies of instant fusion, using the material to like link and uh, Gary, for instance, is a level four, so you can make a rank four Xyz out of the extra monster zone, freeing it up for another one. As a result, they have seen a lot of play both in like really glacially slow control decks uh, that have not been kind of not particularly successful and combo decks with the ability to pivot to a control style of play after making a first turn board. I do really like that, actually. Um, I, I was always a fan of the really grindy decks, like pre Spellbook of Judgment um spell books i i loved spell book of fate i think it was one of the best cards in the game during that time and that was that was really cool and i can i can see this being fun and instant fusion was just such a nutty card uh the fact that you've got a theme that's got it uh like a themed version of it it seems really really good in master duel specifically they had to ban instant fusion finally yeah that that, that seems like it was gonna have to happen <laughs> this is a card that i think we are all still kind of thinking about transaction rollback so this card you can flip to pay half your life points then target a normal trap in your opponent's graveyard except transaction rollback this effect becomes that card's effect this effect is never activated uh, the relevant part of this card is the second half that, which says you can banish this card from your graveyard pay half your life points then target a normal trap in your graveyard this effect becomes that card's activation effect no 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 you never print this this is this <laughs> This seems absolutely insane. You get to skip the activation requirements of any trap card. No. <laughs> oh my god, this seems absolutely nutty. So yeah, you just banish it from your graveyard and you get to use any normal trap effect. No. Surely not. Am I missing something? Mm. No, this is this you can't you can't print this this is insane. <laughs> There's no way that you could print this. Well, obviously it has been printed, but <laughs> It, that's nuts. That's absolutely nuts. So the truth of the matter is that while this card is clearly broken on face, it is not really represented just because the top decks already do things that are more broken. Um, but every deck now has the ability. Uh, I'm sure you're familiar with uh, the uh, rank six Burning Abyss monster, Beatrice. Yeah, Beatrice. Uh, any oh, she can dump this, right? She can dump this and a trap uh, by activating it on your turn and your opponent's turn. And boy, there are a lot of good ones. FTKs for days. There's uh, there's one that prevents your opponent from summoning that's very popular. Elemental Burst, like a 2010 card, uh, occasionally sees some experimentation with this. <laughs> they, can't, they can't really interact with it because it's in the graveyard as well. Uh, nope, it's it's kind of DD Crow or bust. But uh, regrettably, still not <laughs> enough uh, when it comes to kind of what is playable right now. How have we gone into a world where something like this isn't playable? This seems absolutely insane. Like it's gonna be, 
I mean, for future design as well, mm -hmm. this card is hugely problematic because it's going to be good as long as trap cards are being printed. And trap cards are big, well, they're not really a big part of competitive play anymore, unfortunately. But any trap you print in the future, regardless of whatever restrictions you put on it, this card is always going to be in consideration for that. This this is probably something that ends up on the Forbidden Unlimited list someday. This card is nuts, and I, I can't believe it doesn't get played at all. Suppose I would say there was one very powerful trap deck in recent memory called Labyrinth, and it, of course, did max out on this card, and it yeah. was a house. It was unbelievable. Uh, it, because it also doesn't copy the name, you could use it to activate once per turn traps twice, and, you know, there's just so many fun little... That. So many fun little interactions. I don't know if you have seen this card at all, but it is one of the hardest cards, I think, for us to understand if it was good or not. I think in many ways the jury is still out. So this is Super Star Slayer Typhon Sky Crisis. So during the turn of or the turn after, your opponent has special summoned two or more monsters from the extra deck. You can also Xyz summon this card just by using a monster you control with the highest attack. If you do, you can't normal or special summon monsters for the rest of this turn. While this monster is on the field, neither player can activate the effects of monsters with 3,000 or more attack. And then once per turn, you can detach a material to return a monster from the field to the hand. So your opponent does their combo, passes back to you, yeah. and then you, can, you have the ability to Typhon during that turn. This is a board breaker card. Um, I really like this, actually, and it's any monster as well that you can just actually summon it onto. Whoever has the highest attack, yeah. This feels this feels really good. I guess it kind of depends on the format. It obviously shuts off all the boss monsters that are over 3,000, but they're, they're, that's still a big window of monsters that can be used. But as a board breaker for picking apart somebody's fill, uh, detaching material, bouncing a card, um, also having 2,900 attack to run over stuff, you lock yourself out of stuff the rest of the turn, but for playing into an opponent's fill, this feels, this feels really good. Um, I'd, 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 I'd play around with this actually, depending on the format and what people are trying to do um, with their turn one combos. I kind of like it. Um, I, I guess it depends on, is there just like really prevalent on the gates that are less than 3,000 attack that everybody is playing? Because if the answer is this, the people are gravitating towards stuff that are, are bigger, then this feels really good. This is cool. This isn't something that I would throw into my bulk piles online. I actually think I'd play test with this uh, uh, on the format because it's just, you don't have to draw it. It's removal and your opponent, if you are playing that go second deck, uh, I was actually a huge fan of breaking through an opponent's board and then winning the game as opposed to setting up a negate board. And part of that was because you had to memorize what all of your opponent's choke points were in their combos uh, mm -hmm. versus I'm just going to understand how to pick apart a field where I can see all the text in front of me. Um, if you have more time to play Yu-Gi-Oh, going first was obviously more advantageous. But back when I was doing Master, I was playing like the AI deck and my whole goal was to, okay, you've set up. I'm going to just play out this combo that leads with me going access, go talker, swing twice, and I'll just break through everything. And this is this very much plays to the style of Yu-Gi-Oh that... Um, I would probably play so i actually really like this card and i guess you said like you, the community doesn't really know where it sits right now there's definitely a place for this in competitive play it feels really good so it I is like it. it is good uh it's a very good card but it is it is not fantastic it's not like the greatest card in the game or an immediate auto win on its own it is a contender in pretty much every extra deck but extra decks have become so tight that frequently it also does not make yeah. the cut. With respect to, you mentioned something about like if there's a bunch of Omnis around, this is probably not fantastic. Um, almost every just general Omni negate that lives in the extra deck has been banned. The the last, it's not an Omni, but the last like generic extra deck guy is Apollosa. And we kind of expect that it will not last forever. Um, in fact, that effect, uh, the 3000 or more attack al almost never comes up. It was a little more powerful when Baron de Fleur, which is this very powerful synchro summonable Omni Negate, was everywhere, um, but has since been banned. So there's not too much it feeds on anymore. It is still a very good card. Like you hinted at, you can do your entire combo, push through as much as you can, and then end on this monster, uh, cleaning up the remainder of your opponent's board. Um, 
but it doesn't do anything on your side of the field, so your opponent will survive till the next turn and have a chance to break it. It is a really interesting, engaging card, and we all I think we're all pretty happy to have it. Like, it's just a, a cool piece of board removal in a game that often seems like it's about board building. But again, extra decks are tight. Definitely sounds like it's a little bit challenging to play, but this is good this, this is good card design because it makes it makes you think you have to really take the time to think of like does this belong, belong in my deck do i do i have a slot for this do i give something up because of how important it is it's not something where it's like well obviously i just play this this is a better x card or something so i kind of like that where it gives the players a chance to figure it out and as the format shift there'll be times where this card could potentially fade in and fade out of the format as well this is this is this is definitely good design. Okay, this is I would say probably the last one I'd like to know is uh, SP Little Knight. So this is a generic link two to effect monsters. Pretty bad arrows here. If this card is yep. link summoned using a fusion synchro exes or link monster as material, you can target a card on the field or in either graveyard, banish it. Also, your monsters cannot attack directly this turn. Then when your opponent activates a card or effect as a quick. You can target two face-up monsters on the field, including a monster you control. Banish both until the end phase, and those are both hard ones. I'm trying to remember what the quick link effect was, which link monster let you link summon in your opponent's turn. Uh, that is IP um, Mascarena. I IP Mascarena. Yeah, Mascarena. Yeah, that feels really good to slip this one into. If yeah. that's not making an Appaloosa or something to that effect, just straight up delete something. That's pretty good. And then obviously you're not attacking during your opponent's turn. When your opponent activates a card or effect, target two face-up monsters on the field, including the monster you control, including itself. That effect is, or that kind of like self-jumping effect is always kind of, there's been a couple of cards in you go. I actually really like this, the ninja look for it, reminds me of Strike Ninja. Yes. Which was banished oh. two dark monsters to jump it in and out of play. And that card was like, really, it wasn't good enough to see a ton of play during the Invasion of Chaos format, but mm -hmm. The fact that it could dodge Mirror Force and these kinds of plays made it really annoying to try and deal with. And this is this is an interrupt because it just takes your opponent's card straight off the field as a quick effect and it comes back so that you can use it again later. This is really sticky. It's like um Time Thief Redoer. It can yeah. kind of like keep dodging in and out of play. And cards like that feel really good because they're really obnoxious for the opponent to deal with and it's generic like honestly my biggest fear with this card is that it was just listed as two effect monsters it wasn't any kind of restriction on it i guess they've kind of given it a soft restriction whereas like you have to use a fusion synchro xe or link monster uh in order to get that first effect which is just straight up delete something this is this is insanely good like it's so it's so generic as well it just slots into basically any deck as a really obnoxious interrupt and also removal spot removal that you don't need to draw i i really think that this should have probably had more restriction on what you can summon it with because i think of like back to when i was in uh when i was involved in the monsters were kind of like nightmares i think where you had to discard a yes. card to get the spot yes. removal and this is just like hey yeah just link summon me and you can kill something and then i'll proceed to aggravate the opponent for the rest of the game however long that will be this this card is is extraordinarily strong in my opinion yeah this is the best card in the game uh <laughs> it's not not super uh shocking you figured out the use case immediately is uh ip mascarena as part of an end board makes this on your opponent's turn allows you to pivot into apollosa if you need to this fusion synchro Xyz or link monster thing uh occasionally means you overpay it but it also occasionally means if you're playing a deck that has like an in archetype link one or plays level one monsters and can go into a card like relinquished anima which is a, a generic level one link monster then you just get to do it anyway uh for two total monsters it's uh it's just everything it's it's unbelievably powerful removal for any card accessible on your opponent's turn it comes back forever like redoer it's great it's really really good yeah this is i actually just saw in the chat someone said uh, check the price and i saw the quarter of a century <laughs> yeah. was like 379 monopoly money so yeah. like yours. <laughs> um, that's insane <laughs> Yeah, the, the yeah, price that's... of the game has also gotten a little out of hand, but it's currently concentrated in about five total cards, of which this is one. Yeah, I can imagine that you'd be very happy to open open these out of your packs. Uh, this, card, this card is great. The, I guess the trick for design is to not print too many cards like this, because then it, mm. that that tight extra deck, um, that, that problem gets even more pronounced when you've got cards as insane as this. This mm. is just crazy good.
Uh, in terms of the extra deck now, uh, they have become exceptionally tight to the point where people are not playing. Uh, was Pot of Extravagance around when you were designing? Yeah, it was played in the um, Eldritch deck, right? Where it's like, yes. um, banish the top six cards of your extra deck randomly and draw two. Uh, did you ever get uh, Pot of Prosperity? I don't remember. I I think I remember hearing about Port of Prosperity, but I don't know if it was when I was working there. Is that the one that's basically Scry? Yes, it's it's banish six from the extra deck of your choosing, and then you can look at the top six and pick one. Uh, oh, of your choosing. Oh my god, that's insane. Crazy powerful card, but seeing very little play, just because the extra deck is so uh, important. It's like you have to start with a 20-card hand. So it is a very strange situation we found ourselves in, but everyone finds room for SP Little Knight. Probably a good candidate for an alternate rare reprint as well at some point. There is a... A reprint set coming out momentarily, and we are all, we are hoping and praying that she will make an appearance. It seems like it was designed around her, so. The experience of what actually goes into making and delivering a game, there are so many more steps than just writing the cards, playtesting them. Um, and you always have that problem that no matter how long in the office you playtest the cards, the very first day that they go out, the world will play more games than you ever have time to play once you get out of there. And it's hard to errata something after you've put it out there um, because it requires actually posting a, an update or doing um, reprints which changes the card text and stuff you've got the localization issues uh, you've got all of the log logistics uh, trying to make sure that you actually get the product coordinating making sure that all the shops are releasing the set on the same day and the single card vendors aren't getting their stock four days early those kinds of problems um, it's a game the size of Yu-Gi-Oh is actually incredibly complex on operating, and uh, I'm very grateful for the colleagues I got to work with for, for so long. Best of luck to you, and thank you so much for hopping on this. This was so sick. Yeah, no, honestly, thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it, and uh, thank you to everybody on, uh, in, in your audience as well. And I look forward to hearing from, from some of you in the future, and yeah, no, again, thanks. This has been great. This has been uh, really fun to to revisit some new, newer Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Well, there are there are certainly many, many more, and we will <laughs> we yeah. Feel free to get me back on in a, in a couple of months to say. So, what were you thinking? What yeah, were you thinking about this? I'm like, uh, sure. We'll, we'll ask about the, the fiend like, smith in the future. Yeah, <laughs> don't worry. Yeah, no worries. The fiend smith. Okay, I just guess we'll find out when when it happens. But uh, yeah, cheers. <laughs>